Why hello YouTube. I want to talk a little bit today about how life mimics boxing and boxing, boxing mimics life. And this is why boxers are so interesting. And usually, a lot of the time, the winners that they are. Um, in boxing, and I'm going to bring up two different types of philosophies in boxing. You got one philosophy that is a uh, uh, most easily described by an individual as a Mike Tyson, George Foreman, uh, Sonny Liston type of philosophy. Always moving forward, going after the guy, controlling everything around you, uh, being the authority in the ring. And then you've got another type of philosophy, which is more of a uh, move around, dance around uh, type of uh, counter reactionary philosophy uh, for a boxer. And uh, it's the good counter puncher, the guy that's waiting for you to do something, and when you do something to him, the reaction comes bold and swiftly. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how life is that way. Um, you've got, for example, uh, the authorities. And the authorities would be people such as, I'm going to use the easiest group, but it, it would be state, local government, federal, uh Everybody from the president to secretary of state to your local sheriff to the deputy that just got hired or local city police person that just got hired Friday. And we're Sunday today. So, um, and everybody in between. Um, life is, you, you've got the authority types uh, and authority today uh, especially today is a mental illness not in boxing but in life but the concepts are the same uh, it transcends colors it transcends religions it just transcends everything humanly descriptively possible in the differences of human beings. They're in all groups. Uh, you, I'll use police and local deputies as an, as an example because it's what maybe you see more often than not. Uh, you can be going down the street today and you can be in your car or truck and get pulled over knowing full well maybe you see the cop in the way, way distant, and uh, so you immediately check your speed because you see way, way, way down the road there's a cop. So you don't want to be speeding, so you're dead looking on your speedometer, watching what you're doing, using your turn signals. But they stop you anyway, and they lie, and they tell you that you were speeding, you were doing five miles over the limit, or that you didn't use a turn signal while lane changing or making a turn or whatnot. <clears throat> and they supersede that authority. And, it just worked, and it's predominantly uh, from the president down to the local policeman in the small township. And, and everybody's doing the same. Uh, they they overextend the authority because they're narcissists, and many of them are just full blown sociopaths or psychopaths, and they they abuse all the authority that they have, and 
uh, you've got another group of people that uh, they react to the to the authority, and that's what we're seeing more and more in the world today. But it's uh, you know. I'll use the George Floyd protest that started the BLM and all this Antifa mess and all these riots really worldwide, but especially in the United States. And it's, we need to realize that last week, this past week, or this Sunday today, it's a Sunday if you're watching this video, and over the past several days, information with text messaging and emails going back and forth from the medical examiner to the district attorney in the George Floyd case and law enforcement officials in general that uh, George Floyd was not murdered. He was not even helped to die. Um, George Floyd was a victim of George Floyd's own uh decades-long uh, drug abuse and alcohol abuse. Um, we used for the reactionary side a big lie. And, and we happened to uh, aggrandize a hoodlum that threatened to cut a baby out of a Pregnant woman, kill a pregnant woman with a knife. Someone that had been locked up, not a gentle giant as they portrayed to us, but a very vile and violent thug. You know? And there's, we now know it was all that all of it was a lie. And we just found out concretely he wasn't murdered by the police officer. But due to the vast array of bad officers, and I, I no longer say things like, uh, oh, blessings to the thin blue line, or I back blue. I don't do that. I, don't do, uh, I love freedom, and I love decency, and honor, and good ethics, and moral character. And the way I see it is uh, uh, I hear fellow humans telling me things like, oh, well, it's just a few bad apples in policing. Now, what about all the supposed good apples that don't turn or turn in, uh, testify against, or charge bad officers? Uh, every time you see an event, there's more than one officer, isn't it? And the officers, you very, very rarely, maybe 1%, maybe 1 out of 99 abusive police uh, actions, maybe 1 out of the 99, uh, there'll be one officer that'll stand up against the bad officer. The rest of them just step back and watch it. So I don't want to hear the other 99 are rotten to the core too. And as a Christian, uh, the Bible teaches teaches all of us that if you hang around a den of thieves, you are a thief. So, um, nothing complicated about that. That they sit around and cover for each other, lie for each other, and they want your sympathy, and they just don't get it from me. Uh, they've over-abused their power, the authority has, that the, the counter-puncher, the reactionary, has over-abused their combativeness against the corrupt authority, corrupting both corrupting both. Uh, it's not a racial thing. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, maybe you live in a county and it's got a terrible 
black section eight area. Uh, it's got rundown trailer parks in another area. And then you got a big, beautiful, nice area for these people. And then you got the middle class. And the middle class is always hung between, uh, put between every issue. They're put between the slugger, the one that goes in and gets the authority in the ring, and the counterpuncher, the guy that reacts to the authority in the ring of life. And uh, the middle class is, is just stuck between these two things. And maybe cops will go into a black poor section and they're abusive to uh, some blacks there. The, the difference is you get to hear about that if there if there's race going on here with it. Because when they go over to the white poor section, you hardly hear about it. You just really don't hear about it as much, number one. But take that out of it, because really it's not a racist thing. That would be a publicized thing anyway. There would be no race to that. But what I'm trying to tell you is, if you're over here in the black section, and they abuse you, and you are you over here in the white section, and they abuse you. You're both abused. So they're doing it to everybody. Now, some people say, well, they're doing it to the black community, trying to drag the race thing into it more. But really not. Uh, you look at the crime statistics, and you got 13% of the population uh, that portion of the segment committing half or better of the crimes uh, in total, of course it's going to happen to that race more uh, if they are committing 50% or better of the criminal activity. So, and no doubt there's race trouble. Uh, race trouble everywhere. Uh, I feel as a white guy, I feel as abused as a black guy a lot of the time. And the reason why is because I, number one, I get sick and tired of people calling me a bad person. I'm a racist when I sat there and I hear people like not want to be around my color of people, you know, or hate my color of people. And I guess if a black guy's hearing that, I just don't hear that from white people, but I'm sure they're out there, that they're not going to like it either, you know. So if it's happening to the black guy and happening to the white guy, those two guys should be thick as thieves and filled together. And that's what's lacking in the Western world today. Uh, we, we don't have people sticking and banding together any longer. We just don't have that. Uh, everybody's got a us versus them attitude and they'll the authority will poke us to get the reaction out of us to control us more uh, and when they get us to looking at other things that are not even true in scope or nature, and we'll go down it, we'll go uptown or downtown and burn shit up and tear our own racist things up, be we black or white, because we get to a point we don't give a dang, and that's got to stop. And the biggest problem is there's no moral compass to go to no more. Uh, you used to could go to a church, but uh, a lot of these preachers today. I tend my flock. I'm the ruler over the flock. And uh, not even going by how the Bible said to set a church up and the importance of the elders and the minimization of the guy that's going to be talking every week, which was way minimal. 
and it's turned and it's flipped, and we don't even have churches to go to to get common sense principles, biblical principles, spiritual principles any longer. Uh, you see it in politics as well. There's nowhere to turn to. Um, if you are a liberal, you sit over here and maybe there's some liberal principles that you love and you really want. And uh, uh, I really feel sorry for traditional liberalists because you've just been pushed out. You don't exist no longer, basically. You do, but you're as non-existent as as they're trying to make white men today and white women are the majority of any society anywhere. So it's being done to all colors. Uh, but you're a liberal and you adhere to peace and traditional liberal policies. You're a conservative and you, you appeal to uh, isolationist peace type policies. Maybe there are a little two differences of peace, but they're both peace. And you liberal over here, you're, you're, your authority is pushing for war as fast as they can, draining you dry for it and running the charge to give all your money to defense contractors and not only not avoid war, but prolong it, prolong the death and destruction. You're the conservative over here, and it's the same exact thing. You have your authority pushing for war, wanting to prolong the death and destruction, and rape you of your money to uh, give to these defense contractors, which in turn are giving them some back and giving them stock options and things like that. Uh, these people are so sick in authority that now they've got such a control that they're doing these things in front of our face. And we've got to wake up. The way I train Joe is to be the authority and uh, to work hard, uh, not believe that the other guy's going to lay down and give something to him. Uh, I train him to daze immediately at the beginning to knock the heck up out of and get the other guy confused and then finish him. Just uh, demoralize him by moving forward using the strength that God's given. Uh, and there's a variety of other different ways, but those are just one example I mentioned. Uh, I got a other couple of guys that they're, they're a lot smaller weight classes were working on strength because that's the first aforementioned policy is the policy. It's the policy. Uh, about, and I, I say, never hit a guy while he's down and don't cheat. Don't do it. You can think about it, but don't do it. And we do a lot of countermeasures to cheat, but, but we are not designing cheating tactics. We don't need them, number one. And number two, we've got a moral foundation to stand on, so we don't need it. Uh, now, the couple smaller guys, there's guys that are still building with the strength, and I have them be more reactionary and move back up, weight, slip, punch, weight, you know, bob, weave, punch. Uh, there's a lot of things. But uh, I also tell them, don't cheat. And I also tell them, be very careful the reactionary fight be very careful because this other guy could kill you in the ring he could break your jaw he could knock three or four front teeth out uh, he could break your ribs I mean there's a plethora of things that could happen to you uh, concuss you. you just 
bunch of stuff. And I tell them, you be damn careful and wait and use the moral plan that we have in your reactionary force against the stronger authority that you face in the ring. And the problem is with the reactionary fighters is the problem that we have with the world. The authoritative fighter, the stronger guy, the guy that commands the thing from start to finish, the guy that's always moving forward, is going to continue to do that process. There is none other process greater for him. He'd be a fool to change that process. So the reactionary boxer, fighter, has to be very, very careful in the way they approach things. And if that reactionary fighter, boxer, is not moving true to his ethical and moral gym training, uh, he's going to get hurt. So he's, he's got to behave himself even better and hit standing on top of his concrete foundation than the authoritative fighter has to. And that's the only way to beat the authoritative fighter. You've got to react, but the reaction has to be pinpointed. There has to be truth in the movement, truth in the everything that the reactionary counterpuncher is doing against all of that power because one slip up out of the counterpuncher the reactionary fighter and boom he's knocked out he's gone so I've given a lot of food for thought to chew on here you guys know I go around the block 20 times to get to the point I could have made in 10 seconds but Hope you've hung on and listened to this. Uh, life is very confusing now. And all you can do in life now is react to the crazy, sick authority that is in trying to control you. And you've got to find ways to not let them control you. Um, that you can move forward in life without them having the control and the spiritual control and the mind control that they get over you is the biggest control ever. They can lock us up and put, put us all in prisons, but they, they can't lock this up or lock this up. Uh, only you and the King of Kings is in control of that. So you got to be careful out there. Uh, so I'm telling all you young people, seize the day. And when I say seize the day, seize your actions of the day. You are in control of how you react to these mentally ill authorities over you. You are in control of your reaction to them. So try to steer clear of the mentally ill authority and do the best you can. And when confronted by the mentally ill authority, uh, everything you do has to be pinpoint. Uh, and moral yourself. And moralness can go all the way up to the point and beyond the point of knocking the other guy out. You are allowed to do that, see. You're very allowed biblically and on a concrete foundation to take things as far as you need to take them to protect innocent people. Uh, there's biblical permission given to that. So that's another clouded thing that they're putting on us. They keep using the V word. And that doesn't mean V for victory. It's the other V word. And if you dare even say the word, they'll flag you. 
and uh, but you sometimes you have to commit the against the mentally ill authority uh, or you'll never get any peace you'll never get any liberty and you'll never have any life they will snuff the very life out of you uh, slowly and or quickly at their own bidding and own choosing so uh, get you a good concrete foundation to stand on control yourself which is the most important thing and realize what's going on around you and don't go after a fake false enemy uh, such as all this race entanglement bullshit going on today and the Bible will help you out real good with that. Um, just sat down and read the Bible. Um, not allowing yourself to be encouraged or brainwashed by others into a fake, false, love Jesus that's not the real Jesus. Uh, the real Christ is love. But it's not a love that we understand. So, anyway, for those that, few folks that watch these videos, appreciate it. And uh, not trying to reach a large group of people, don't care nothing about that. Just an old man. And really, if nobody watches anything, They'll be online unless they come take them down. And we've got them on computers and hard drives and things uh, where my son gets to see them. And my grandchildren will be watching me long after I'm gone. And above oh boy, if you think what I'm saying now is radical, what will it be for them? So, blessings, to God's blessings to my Christian brothers and sisters and to everyone else. Uh, look into the true King of Kings, Lord of Lords, uh, and see what you think. Because he's there, ready and waiting for you. He loves everybody. Uh, he wants you on his in his camp. 